Hey guys, Mike here. Now in this video, I'm going to be talking to you about epoxy garage floor coatings. I'll go over the types of products that I don't like to use, and then the types of products that we do use, the methods we use to prep, put the base coat down, broadcast the flake, and then do the top coat. Now what we're doing right here is there was a painted coating on here. I don't know if it was just like regular floor paint or if it was some type of epoxy. It was a pretty old coating, but it was peeling up in quite a few spots. The homeowner thought it looked ugly, <laughs> and it was kind of ugly. It was pretty old. It was all scratched up. So he decided he wanted a brand new coating with, with the flakes in it this time. So we got this thing ground off. It probably took us two to three hours to get it all ground off, doing it by hand this way. It seemed to come off better by hand. We got a big floor grinder back in, right in the trailer right in there. We tried that. It's a 220 volt and it just didn't seem to get this stuff off very fast. It actually seemed to come off faster doing it by hand. So we ground it off by hand. And you can see the type of uh, surface it leaves when you grind it off. Now what Darren's doing right there is he's filling in some cracks with our, with our secret crack filler. If you really want to know how to do these floor coatings the right way, you know, step by step where I break all the steps down, go over everything you need to know, I do have a garage floor course down in the description below so you can check that out. But what we're doing right now is, you know, filling in any cracks, little holes, chips in the saw joints, just to get everything all cleaned up and fixed up. That stuff dries really quick in about 15 to 20 minutes we can grind it off and in this case the crack is filled in really nice and then what we're going to do with that that little scored part in the middle you saw Darren filling in is we'll get that grind clean ground clean and then we'll recut the saw joint right there that that cross section right there was kind of chipped up it just didn't look very good but after we got it uh, filled in and then recut it would just look like brand new again so there's some little tricks like that that we do that make these floors come out really, really nice in the end. Yeah, you can see how that cross joint looks really good now. And then the, the surface of the concrete, you can see how it's kind of a whitish surface. Now that, when we grind it, it really opens up the pores and it, to accept the epoxy coating. If you just try to coat over smooth concrete or concrete that's just been acid etched, pretty good chance you're not going to have the proper surface prep for something like that so we got our flakes put in the bucket we got our distances all measured out for each kit and we're putting down our epoxy now and you know we cut in the edges we roll the edges and then we roll this stuff out so we can flake into it and this is a hundred percent solids epoxy we use we don't use the the cheap 50% solids you get at the big box stores, half of that stuff after the coating dries evaporates. So you're only left with 50% of it. This stuff here is made, you know, it's, it's, it's really good high quality stuff. So 100% of the product you roll down stays on the floor after it cures out and hardens. That's a big difference, you know, versus people that do it professionally versus, you know, people that want to try to do it themselves they just don't know stuff like that so Darren's mixing the product up Luke's getting the the major part of it rolled out with the 18 inch roller and then I'm coming right behind him and broadcasting those flakes in we call this broadcast into rejection so we'll completely cover the base coat and then uh, once once the base coating cures up which in this case we use a really fast drying one because we like to get this whole process done in a day now you don't if this you're just doing it for your own garage you don't need to do this all in one day you could do it in a couple days but when we go out on job sites you know that we might be two hours away from the shop and to travel back and forth is just going to raise the cost a little bit so we like to use really high quality products that dry really fast that way we can complete it in a day and then the homeowner's not out. You know, they can move their stuff back in in a day or two and they're right back in business again with a brand new floor. So we have a process, we do it with, you know, with the three guys. Like I said, Darren's the mixer. He makes sure the kits are all separated and mixed properly. 
Luke generally rolls out the main sections. I'll help him cut in edges if I can. And then I go back and, and I broadcast the flake into the floor and make sure it's all covered really, really nice. That Once that flake is broadcast in there, the flakes not only add to the color, but they also add to the durability. You're actually building on the thickness of the floor with those flakes. So, you know, once, once you're done with a floor like this, I call it, it's pretty much bulletproof. It's going to handle just about anything. <laughs> anything you put in there, it's going to handle as far as wear and tear. Um, and it's going to hide scratches, it's going to hide dirt because of all the flake and everything. So it's not going to look like the previous floor that was just a solid color that showed basically every single scratch that you put in it. You could see this stuff here, after we top coat it, it's going to be pretty much bulletproof. That's another thing on those cheap uh, big box store coatings. There's no top coat. You just you roll down the base coat like we do. And then they give you a tiny little, like a quart can of flakes. And you broadcast those flakes in them and then that's it. You're done. There's no top coat. So you're not even really protecting the flakes. I just, I don't understand how they even sell those things. But you got you got to really know what you're doing to do these things right and make them last. These floors we do, they last years, 10, 15, 20 years if they're maintained properly. You can see how we completely cover the base coat there. So... That looks really, really cool when we're done. Now what we do is because this stuff is fast curing, we just, we basically, we sit around wait for an hour to an hour and a half, and then we can jump right back on there and get the, the all the loose flakes scraped up. We scrape these with a floor scraper because, you know, not only do we want to remove all the excess flakes, but we want to smoothen out that surface too when, when I throw them flakes in there, they're sticking up all different kinds of ways. They don't just lay perfectly flat. So we'll scrape north and south, and then we'll scrape east and west, and we'll pick up any of the excess flakes, put them back in the box. We can reuse them. And then we'll vacuum and vacuum and just get everything cleaned up really, really nice to get it ready for the top coat. And once we're done vacuuming, I mean, we're ready to go. We'll put that top coat right down. We use a clear polyaspartic top coat. Polyaspartics don't yellow in the sun. That's another thing you, that they won't tell you at the big box stores. I mean, you just put epoxy down. When that epoxy sits in that sun, you know, it yellows and it just turns a different color. So you definitely don't want to use epoxy where there's going to be sun. Polyaspartics don't do that. That's, that's why we use polyaspartics. So... Not only are they a little bit of a higher quality type coating, but they're UV resistant. We don't have to worry about any of that happening over time. So again, Darren mixes up the, the product for us. Luke and I will cut in edges and then we'll roll it and back roll it. And it's going to, now you're really going to see the true color of the flake after you put this coating on. The viscosity of the coating is, I don't know, it's its not really, it's not quite like water, but it's about as close to water as you're going to get for a coating. It's not quite like, uh, not it's not quite as thick as syrup. It's, it's kind of in between the syrup and the water, I guess. So it, it rolls down really, really nice. We don't use a squeegee typically to, to spread it out. Usually we can spread it out really good with the 18. And then you can see how Luke's just rolling it right out. We'll get it rolled out. We'll, sometimes we'll go over it two times. He'll, he'll get it rolled out like this. And then he'll go back over it left to right. And then we'll do like a finish, a finish type roll from east to west on this thing. And that makes sure we don't have any lines or any uh, dry spots or anything like that. You can see how that darkens it. Now it's going to stay that color where it's dark, where it looks wet, it's going to stay that color. It won't lighten back up like where Darren's walking on it right now. We'll typically, because this stuff sets up pretty fast too, we'll mix up about a gallon at a time. When we get a, you know, we'll get it right out of the bucket and then we'll get it rolled right out. So we'll do gallon mixes and, you know, we have the square footages all marked out. So to keep track of how far we need to go with each gallon. 
I teach all that stuff, guys. I mean, there's a process to do this right, and then there's a process to do this wrong. And if you're going to do something like this, you really want to know how to do it right. If no one teaches you how to do it and you're just winging it, you're just asking for failure. <laughs> Trust me, you're asking for failure. And you don't want a failure on something like this. You'll be, you'll be grinding it back off, or you'll be living with something that doesn't look good at all. If you once you know how to do it right, it's actually kind of easy, honest to be honest with you. But you know, there's just a little bit of a like anything, anything you learn, there's a little bit of a process to it. So we're gonna just get that rolled out, cutting in the edges. You know, we like using the little rollers and a and just a little chip brush for cutting in edges. The 18 is the key though. You want to make sure you got at least one 18. Sometimes we'll have two of them going depending on how hot the temperatures are. If the temperatures are really hot, you know, we'll have two guys rolling just to get this stuff down and get it out. You don't want to stop and start either. Once you get started on something like this, you want to make sure you, you know, you leave yourself enough time to go from start to finish. Two guys, two guys could do this pretty easily. I mean, they'd just be hustling. One guy mixing, dumping, cutting in edges, one guy rolling, you know, we'd just be working a little bit faster if there was just two of us, but typically with three, it works really, really good. It makes the whole process go a lot easier. So again, guys, if you want to learn from me how to do this and how to do it right, click on my garage floor epoxy coating course down in the description. You can learn how to do this. I, I show you all the, the right products to use, where to get the flakes. Thanks for watching, guys. We'll see you on the next one.